Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, contrary to what this camera angle normally means, it's not build day, it's unbuild day. Unbuild day, debuilding day, destruction day, not destruction, bring me nice to them. Um, today, I am fortunate enough to once again have two mode 80s in front of me, um, but this time we've got the 2022 version. Uh, I did that three times <laughs> in the review video. We've got the 2020 version here uh, and the 2022 version here. In case I mess up saying which is which, navy blue with gray butt is the 2022 version and the dark top mirror booty, there you guys are, say hello, uh, is the 2020 version. So, okay, we're just getting that out of the way now because I'm gonna say the wrong year at least 17 more times and I'm not gonna put something on screen every time I do it, so, sorry. Um, we're gonna tear both of these down side by side. Uh, these two keyboards, if you haven't watched my review already, I'll link to it. Um, these two keyboards are, are subtly different. Um, subtly different, but different in important ways. So what we're gonna do is uh, just tear them down together so I can walk through a lot of the differences. What I wanted to accomplish with the review video is show the build montage, talk about the differences, and then just have an absolute buttload of sound tests because I've got this keyboard, 2022, currently with the FR4 plate and black inks in stack mount mode, which matches how I've always run my 2020 unit. But they also sent me their reflex linear switches, um, which are these handsome fellas right here with the uh, yellow stem, light factory lubing. Um, and the reason they sent me those to use is because they also sent me a solder PCB and a half plate so I could try that, so I could kind of run all the configurations. And they very nicely sent me these switches so I wouldn't have to desolder them afterwards. I have a desolder gun, but that's still you know, nice and considerate of them to, uh, to do that. So, um, why was I saying that? These are two very subtly different keyboards. Um, and I want to tear them down side by side so we can compare them while they are as similar to each other as possible. Um, they both have uh, Duroc V2 stabilizers. Um, I've got clear ones in my 2020. I, I want to say in 2020, that feels so long ago now. There was like a Duroc stabilizer shortage or something. Uh, and the smoky ones were hard to get or maybe they weren't out yet. I don't remember. Um, but the, my lubing technique has changed considerably between these two boards. Um, but build-wise, they are as similar as they are ever going to be. So I want to tear them down side by side, go through some of the differences, and because of the way time works, I'm also filming B-roll while I'm doing this for the review video. So parts of this video are going to be in the review video, just as little short clips during the talking part in the middle, um, so I can visually explain things that are going on. So I've got a little shot list off frame here uh, to make sure I get all the things I need. Uh, and the first thing I want to touch on is really the only design change of this board, and that is the placement of the USB port. Um, on the 2020 version, the USB port is here, uh, near the right edge, which lines up with the blocker here between the alpha cluster and the nav cluster, if you will, um, which I think is a very logical place for it. Visually, it makes a lot of sense. There's that vertical line on the keyboard between the clusters, and then the cable just comes out of that. And when you think about like coiled cables, they all go out of the keyboard coil and then go to the back of the desk and one way or the other, depending on which way you have the cable flipped. So this positioning always made sense to me. Um, but then when they announced the 2022 and it had the centered USB-C port, I was kind of nonplussed about it. I also used the straight, <laughs> the whole time I've been in this hobby, I've used the straight USB-C cable that came with my 2020 unit. To this day, that is the desk, the cable wired into my desk. I really don't, I see why people like the curly cables, they're not for me. So all that to say, when they announced the port movement, it's, eh, whatever, you know, fine. Um, it's symmetrical, cool beans, but not a huge thing for me. Worth noting, exteriorly, exteriorly, exterior-wise, um, outwardly, whatever, that is the only major design change I can see. The other reason I wanted to film this video so I could look at them both side by side with y'all um, and kind of examine them together. The other thing I'm noticing, I'm not sure I'll be able to get this on camera because it's so small, but you know what, we're gonna, we are gonna try. Um, you can see here, if I get the light to reflect just right, focus up, you can see that line 
across it's like at the top third mark of the screen that bright line breaking up the back and top of the keyboard that's a chamfer uh, if you don't know what a chamfer is when you have two surfaces that meet at 90 degrees you've got kind of this hard corner a chamfer is when you put like a, like if, you know you have a 45 on that corner um looking at the 2022 version i do not see such a chamfer you can see there is a bright line just because of the way come on uh the way light reflection works but that's not off a chamfer it almost looks like they filleted the edge instead which is if chamfering is putting a flat surface between two sharply connected surfaces filleting is putting a curve um, between two uh sharply met surfaces so looking at it now the top is chamfered on mine now i don't have this is a first edition here let me back out here um this is a first edition 2020 mode 80 here i don't have one of the non-first editions on hand right now they may have made that change already on the 2020 version i don't know for sure um yeah even internally like my chamfers are really big on this keyboard's so dirty uh, are really big even like around the key web and they're much smaller here that's quite interesting you know what actually those look thinner okay you know what we're breaking out the calipers already i wasn't sure if i was gonna break out calipers we're gonna need the microfiber i'm sure um i wasn't sure if we'd be breaking out <laughs> the calipers today but we are inches gross why was i measuring something in inches uh millimeter Zero. Okay, so let's see here. I'm measuring this part of the key web. You might not be able to see the screen. I'll call it out. 4.13 millimeters. 3.81 millimeters. Interesting. So they did refine. I wouldn't say they changed the design of the top, but they refined the tolerances of the top. One of the things that was kind of an issue, if you will, on 2020 is how tightly it fit the keycaps and like it's almost hard to get a keycap puller like especially in the F row where on top and bottom there's walls if you will so I wonder if that's what we're seeing here is that refinement um that's pretty cool see this is another reason I want to do this video is because I I haven't really examined these in a really analytical way either let's look at these both up on end yeah other than the bigger chamfer on mine well that is not in frame um, other than the bigger chamfer on mine, these look pretty much identical. The corner radius might be a little tighter on the new one as well. That might be grasping at straws though. The finish, the finish on mine's quite shiny. It's really kind of velvety on the navy on the 2022. I really like it. Um, so it kind of makes it hard to judge off the reflection. So my, my eyes could be playing tricks on me here. Um, as far as the back goes, there's these down on there. Stems. Oh, see, now I've switched which one's top and bottom. No, that's no good. That's unnecessarily confusing. Uh, obviously, mine is mirror on the bottom, so you now get to see uh, the bottom side of my uh, goatee there. It's a very, very flattering angle. Um, these look pretty much the same looking at these obviously big difference uh there's no center screw point anymore uh, i'm not sure if they removed that because they realized they could or if they removed that because when they centered the USB-C port they had to see if they could get rid of this anyway because this would punch into where the daughter board goes um and then obviously so my unit is a first edition like i said with the chromed bottom um it is a pvd coated aluminum bottom um, on the mode 65, the mirror bottom is, is PVD brass, so it's significantly heavier. Um, but I'm not seeing any other differences. Foot placement looks about the same. Borders around everything look about the same. Yeah, these, these corner radiuses look the same, so I'm willing to bet these corner radiuses are also the same. My eyes are probably just playing tricks on me because of the different finishes. So exteriorly, um, Centered USB-C port, one less screw holding it together, and the tolerances appear to be slightly looser around the keys. And you hear the word looser and that sounds like a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a really nice quality of life improvement because it still looks quite tight. Uh, again, the, the, if anything, the Mode 80 2020 was too tight. 
um, it you had a hard time getting a keycap puller around the F keys, um, which is which is no good. Um, do I want? Yeah, let me grab my scale. I'm gonna weigh these. I'm not sure how much the PVD might change the situation. PVD is a vapor deposition. That's what the VD stands for. Here, it's phased vapor deposition. Um, so it shouldn't change the weight of the aluminum bottom too much, but I'm still curious just to see what these weigh back to back. Um, so, uh, 1,985 grams. One thousand seven hundred sixty-three grams. That's very interesting. Um, okay. Well, now we need to keep the scale out and weigh the rest of the parts as we go to see where the weight was, uh, quote unquote, lost. Isn't that fascinating? This one felt lighter. It felt lighter. That's actually what made me want to weigh them. Uh, so then we're gonna look at the plate here, real quick. Uh, these are both FR4 plates. You can see the new one has the branding. Uh, it says Mode 80 and has Gondo's logo, who is the PCB designer. Um, because this is an FR4 plate, which is what PCBs are made of, I'm going to assume Gondo is also involved with like designing the solder mask um, and all that, all that good stuff. Um, cutout wise, we've got tighter tolerances on the stabilizer cutouts pretty much across the board here. This. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this cluster, by enter and shift, there's no material in the middle here between these. The new plate has a very thin web of material between those two, so to grab both sides of the switch, that's nice. Backspace cutout looks pretty much identical. Yeah, really, really similar plates. Uh, one quality of life thing with the plates, um, this FR4 plate really should not be used with hot swap. And they said as much. I, I'm, I'm using it with hot swap knowing that that's not the right thing to do. Um, because this plate is just thick enough that switches really don't hold on to it. It's so like when I pull keycaps off of this. This is a, another reason I'm pulling these apart, which is nice. Is I plan on rebuilding my 2020. It's been a while. Um, and I actually might use the black inks out of this one in here because these are lubed so much better <laughs> compared to these ones. All these are broken in, so it's kind of a, a toss-up. I haven't decided yet. Um, but when I'm pulling keycaps out of this one, um, the switch almost always comes out too because the plate is so thick, the switch can't quite grab onto it. Um, so this is a much nicer FR4 plate. Uh, also, I do have, I don't have the screws. Um, or could this plate screw on? Man, it's been so long since I did this. Anyway, this FR4 plate is also screwed to the PCB with standoff, so that helps a little bit with that whole situation. So again, it's really just a refined version of the same keyboard. Um, yeah, okay, I think I've talked long enough um, about the outsides here. I say we tear into this keyboard and see, I apologize in advance on the what we might find inside this one. I've got a beard, so beard hairs fall out of my face. Um, and stuff, so I, I apologize if we like find beard hair inside this keyboard or something just in advance. I've only been using this one for a little bit over a week, um, so we should not find any horrors within this keyboard, I would hope. So uh, let's get started tearing down. So to tear down, we just need one hex key, which is pretty dang nice. Call correctly it is the 2.5 millimeter one here, which is green. Uh, the PB Swiss hex wrenches, I'll always shout these out when I can. The, the quality of the hex wrench itself, you can get similar quality from a lot of people, but the PB Swiss rainbow ones, humans are so much better at remembering color that these are nice. Yeah, just you know, yet another endorsement y'all didn't ask for, but there you go. Put those out of frame at this point. Yep, and I got the right one. Awesome. Back these screws out. We got my little screw trace in there. Those are both 3D printed. Um, the hexagonal one, the top one is a original, air quotes, design. Um, it's a hexagonal screw tray. It's not that original. Uh, whereas the bottom, I actually grabbed the measurements off the Rama site for their little parts trace to see if I could recreate it in CAD. I think I got pretty close, actually. I like this one. This one usually sits on my desk with some artisans in it. My printer didn't do a great job on the bottom, but yeah, it happens. 3D printing, it's a lot of fun. Uh, 
highly recommend it. Although you're watching keyboard videos, so if you're watching this, you probably don't need another expensive hobby, so maybe don't get into 3D printing. As I look suspiciously at my 3D printer about four feet to my left with a box of parts sitting on the print bed because I'm, yeah. If you don't want another expensive hobby, maybe not 3D printing, but it is fun. Okay, so screws removed. Let me flip this one around and get to it first. Uh, this is gonna be uh, a very, uh, a good memory uh, experience here. One of the things I talked about in the review is how damn tight uh, the JST is on the 2020 version. It points straight out of the board, which that's not a huge deal for me, but this connection is so tight and feels so flimsy. Um, this one's much nicer. This one's the same as the 65, as I mentioned in the review. So uh, let's look at... Let me... We're gonna look at the bases first, because then once we're done with those, we're done with those. I need some more safe to put these. Out of frame. I suddenly have a lot of keyboard parts and not a lot of places to put keyboard parts. No, we just, just want to come apart. Oh, because I pushed on the PCB. Spatial reasoning is hard. I still want to jerk the JST connector. Oh, so nice to remove this JST. So, so much better. Mine in my 2020 unit is looser at this point. Um, I am not holding things as well as I could be. There we go. And I need some more safe to put this in the meantime. Scale. Probably gonna edit this out. But comparing this, that means I didn't. Okay, so we're gonna look at the bottoms here. Oh, well, duh, Ian. Look at how much more material that has than this one. I bet this is where our weight difference is. This has a whole pocket machined out in it that this doesn't. That's really interesting. I wonder why that is. That's a really fascinating find. Um, and then this step, this is on the inside of the 65 as well, the kind of terraced uh, machining. There, see if I can get the light to catch that. Um, because if they if they followed this plane all the way forward, they'd punch through the bottom of this because it gets so, so thin at the front. Huh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, obviously you can see the JST pocket moved. Um, I wonder if this is lower. What I'm saying, uh, I'm not sure if this is coming through from the top down. You can see this little edge here. This whole rectangle here is a little inset into this bottom case. So I'm wondering if that's where that 200 grams or so went um, for weight. And I, I was about to say, I wonder if it is machined in just a little bit um, to allow more room for the PCB to bounce when it's in top mount. Because the 2020 version only had stack. You only had stack mount here, so there was no need for allowance for anything else. Neat, okay, well that means it's time to break the scale out again. Um, oh, I guess actually one other detail I wanted to talk about here is you can see the little boss around the two screw points here. Um, on the 2020 version, you were kind of guessing how tight you should make the screws. Um, I mean, it's pretty apparent when you're putting it together, you're not flying completely blind. But this one, that little collar, that little boss actually hits the screw post. You can just see the navy blue peeking through right there. That top surface of that and that top surface of that actually make contact as you tighten it. So much like uh, the Rama U80 in my build video, when, when you do that last turn, it's really apparent that, okay, this keyboard is sealed now um so let's try to scale back up here so this is 1009 grams so basically a kilogram for all intents and purposes oh that's 840 grams there it is there's our lost weight it's in the base yeah and holding these it's even more apparent than just holding the keyboards I really wish I had a non-first edition 2020 on hand so I could check against that as well because I don't know how much of that is this being a special piece 
for the first edition. Um, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Um, internally though, no other major differences. Still got the same tongue and groove system um, for uh, locking on this front. Screw in the back, there you go. Uh, these holes here are likely the mounting points uh, either for machining or for coating, anodization or PVD, um, whatever it might be. Daughter board you can see, is, footprint is the same electrical components. Even look the same. Yeah, silk screen is, is the same. Even, I wonder if they just got an improved cable that's less tight. It, it really actually just might be the cable that's different here because the sockets for the JSTs uh, look pretty much identical as well. Let me get those as uh, close together as I can. So you can see this too. Zoom all the way in on the uh, camera. Oof, did not like that sound. Zoom all the way in here. I might zoom in a little bit more in post. That's still a little far away, but these are tiny little things. So yeah, the daughter board looks identical. I think it's just an improved cable. And then obviously the socket on the PCB is different, but we're about to look at the PCB. So uh, that is, will be shown momentarily here. Okay, so now we've got, again, 2022, 2020 versions here. Um, GST connector, as long as we're talking about it. So you can see here, it's just pointing straight out of the PCB. Just just jutting out of there, which again, works fine. Um, the tightness was the issue for me. Um, whereas on the 2022 version, it's flat against the PCB like on the 65 and the cable is significantly easier to remove. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that pretty much closes out everything I had to say about the daughter boards and bottom cases. Um, I'm just going through my shot list here, making sure I, I got everything. Um, next up is the pour on foam for the stack mount. You can see on the 2020 version, there's a cutout here uh, for the, the port well, if you will, uh, where the cable can kind of bunch up. Uh, and then some cutouts, you know, just around the bottom row where the hot swap layout's a little more complex. Uh, on this one, um, it doesn't cover the top or bottom row at all. So, why might that be? I'm wondering, because there's that dip, like I showed you, where the middle of the bottom case is carved in a little bit, um, if one, if there's just not enough room here for a layer of foam. Well, no, because these are parallel to each other. I don't really know why this is. I think it does affect the sound. Well, something affects the sound. This is the only thing I can think it is. Um, because this one sounds deeper, uh, which having a little more airspace might lend itself to that. I wonder why that is. The other interesting thing about how the poron doesn't completely cover it is when you look at the solder PCB, the same four rows that are covered here are the same four rows that are between the slits in the solder PCB. I, I'm not certain those are related, but I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a mystery to me as to why they would make this decision. Um, what I might do, I've been trying not to talk to Mode since I've gotten the keyboard, just so I, I'm not, you know, getting tainted by outside opinions or, or any biases or anything. Not that they would intentionally do that, but just trying to you know, keep it insulated so it's, it's my experience that I'm presenting to you. I, I might reach out and ask to them why that is. Um, and if they do tell me why, I will put on screen here um, for friends to why that is. Otherwise though, very similar PCBs. They've got the same layout options between the two of them. Um, stepped and non-stepped caps lock, 7U or 6.25U bottom row, um, and then standard uh, ANSI layout otherwise. So nothing, nothing much else there. Let's get the pour on foam out of the way. Check that one off my, my shot list. 
Um, now that we've got that out of the way, it, it is much more apparent the big difference between these two because this one only does stack mount. Um, there, there's no cut-ins uh, along the edge. Um, whereas this one, there's the cutout points for the top mount screws to go in. Um, as far as I can tell, it's the exact same implementation as on the 65. That you just got those pockets, and then you've got the isolated bumpers over them for the isolated top mount. The 80 doesn't officially support non-isolated top mount, like just the normal top mount. Um, I'm thinking that's because the screws... Um, it's either an internal space thing or the screw the the top case is so thin on the 20 or on the 80 um so many numbers uh that w without those spacers in there the screws would be too short um but that really doesn't make sense because it's the same amount of threads regardless hmm mm hmm i'm betting it's an internal space thing then because when you remove these bumpers the whole pcb raises up a little bit, I wonder if that might expose the switches or something like that. All that to say, you can see the pockets there um, for, for those. Um, bottom foam, mounting points. Um, uh, oh, uh, one thing I wanted to note here as well. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll do that once I pull the PCB out. Looking at the back here, nothing else much has, has changed. Interestingly, the 2020 has these flex points here. This one does not. When you're in stack mount, you're not getting a lot of flex. It's a pretty stiff typing experience, so I don't know why these would be here. <laughs> you can see all the traces in the PCB curving around either end of that slot. I'm not sure if I can just catch them in the reflections. Yeah, there we go. Um, so Mode thought those should be there and then they changed their mind for this version. Now, okay, I guess the other thing too, this is a pre-production unit. You can see that my PCB says pre-alpha. Um, so it's possible that yours uh, will be different uh, than this. Um, they did say this was pretty representative of the final product though. So I uh, don't know how much else that'll change. Yeah, cool. Dondo's logo. Uh, oh, mode is tiny here, and they, they did the screen print on, on this one. Just looking for any other differences. I think that's most of it. Slight different uh, positioning for like the diagnostic ports. Um, branding is in a different spot on this one. Um, yeah, otherwise these are pretty much, pretty much the same. Quite similar at least. Uh, let me get, for a moment now, the PCBs out of the way, and we'll look at the top cases. Uh, top cases. So, not a lot different here. Middle screw post, obviously, um, not existent on the 2022 version. Pockets for the mounting system, not on the 2020 version. Otherwise, these are pretty much identical. I am not seeing much else different. Oh, actually, you know, this is interesting. Um, right down here, uh, well, I guess actually a whole point where it exists first. You can see these little pads here. Uh, those also exist on the 65. I wonder if that's a quality of life thing to make it easier to, to seat the bottom in so you can't get it too low. Um, I suppose that could also be a mechanical support thing. Possibly, or is that actually squishy? Yes, it is actually squishy. Oh, that is. Interesting. Doesn't exist on the uh, on the 2020 here. Those, those little fins right there. Otherwise, pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Let's grab the scale. Five hundred and sixty grams. Five hundred fourteen grams. Okay, so everything seems to be just like a little lighter. Uh, I'm willing to bet that difference is the pockets that had to be taken out. 
um, for the top mount. That would be my best educated assumption of why that would be. Okay, main event, part of the keyboard that's actually the keyboard, PCBs. So we already kind of looked at the back. Now that it's out of here, I'm just gonna show off those mounting points. Again, for top mount, up on camera, there we go. You can see them along the top there and then along the bottom. Uh, this is where the space bar is. I mentioned this in the review, how soft the space bar is in top mount because there's no mounting point uh, anywhere uh, nearby the, the space bar there. You can see though, on the 65, you can see it through because I have polycarbonate, haha, <laughs> life hacks. Um, oh, my keyboard, or my keyboard, oh my god, my camera, there we go. Um, you can see that top mounting point, not in the center of the space bar, but right in the center of the uh, of the screen. There you can see that, that mounting point. So that is one thing I wasn't crazy about with the top mount implementation on that. Um, what once again my favorite configuration of this keyboard was the stack mount with black inks that it just it works so well on this keyboard um, but let's look at the top here yeah really not much different eh very very similar you can see how my plate is uh drooping on this one because the fr4 plate won't grab the switches effectively um, which again they, they warned me about that on the on the site I, I did that of my own volition um, but that might come into consideration when I rebuild this in terms of what switches and what plate I pick um, if you watched my initial review of the 2020 mode 80 um, you'll know I've got the aluminum carbon fiber and FR4 plates so maybe I need to go back and listen to my own sound tests uh, and see what what I'm feeling if I do a rebuild um, slightly different positioning of the branding Really, yeah, not not a lot of difference going on here. Um, what I do want to compare, PCB-wise, I assume comparing those wouldn't be horribly interesting, um, is, now this is gonna be confusing, these are both 2022 PCBs, um, just so we're, we're clear on, on, on what's going on here. Um, this is FR4 full plate, hot swap, aluminum half plate, soldered. Um, I just want to point out, first of all, I've never done anything that's remotely even like part of its plateless or half plate. Uh, the switches look very cool just standing on the PCB like that. It just looks kind of neat. I also think it looks cool that the diodes are on top of the PCB on the 80 um, so that they're not rubbing on the foam when it's in stack mount. It just, this is a very cool look. Um, my favorite sounding alphas out of the sound tests uh, were the half plate and stack mount. I really liked the way these sounded. I'm actually really impressed with how the uh, reflex switches sound and feel in general. I did lube and film these so they matched the black inks as closely as possible. Um, but even just fresh out of the box, these sound and felt really good. The, the light oiling they received at the factories, quite nice. Um, these two PCBs, the big difference here is uh, these flex cuts. So you can see one slit here, one slit here, no slits on the hot swap. That is so, because this is where the alphas are, you know, if you think about the top of the PCB, that is so this can flex in half plate builds. You can see it moving separately there when I press against the switches. Obviously that's way over dramatic. That's not actually how it would be um, while typing, but um, that's why that's there. Interesting nonetheless. Uh, and this is the situation where I really didn't like that one mounting points here, one mounting points here. There was nothing here. The the half mount or the half plate top mount space bar was really soft. I, I did not like the way that felt. But as I said in the review, I think really just what I've learned about myself is that I prefer it's different keyboards. That's okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, it's just something to keep in mind if you're going to get one of these yourself. Um, Otherwise, that's really all that's different, you know? Um, you can certainly use the FR4 on a solder build. Um, you, any full plate on a solder build, you just won't get as much flex out of the PCB. And clearly, as you saw in my sound test, it seems kind of silly, but you can use a half plate and stack mount. No, no one's stopping you from building any of these configurations. Um, just using a half plate with stack mount is kind of weird because the whole point of a half plate is flex, and you get very little to no flex with stack mount 
looking around, I think that's kind of it, gang. Um, I think we've kind of noted all the differences. I think the biggest finding that was interesting is that the new one is 200 grams lighter, but I'm not sure if that's first edition versus standard edition or 2020 versus 2022 design. Um, pour on foam, you know, covering different amounts of the keyboard. I can actually put those together here. So here is the, here's the 2020 foam. Here is the 2022 foam. You can see how much the 2020 sticks out pad if my camera will focus. Over here, buddy. Over here, there we go. You can see how much further the foam sticks out on the top and bottom in the new one. I just picked these up and what I noticed, the uh, 2022 has thicker foam. Glad I made that comparison. 2020 foam on my index finger side and the other side's the, or 2020 foam is on my index finger side. Oh my God, 2022 is right here. It's much thicker. I bet that's what takes up that pocket in the bottom case. So I bet the bottom case is machined down a little bit to allow flex room for top mount half plate builds. I bet that's exactly what it is. Isn't that neat? That's pretty cool. I really like doing videos like this where you guys kind of come along for the ride with me. Uh, and get to uh, discover things along with me. Um, kind of talking through something as I'm doing it. Because I do that anyway. When I'm working on a problem, I talk to myself and talk my way through the problem. Um, but there you go. That's that's what I have for you. Two keyboards, three plate PCB combos. Um, really appreciative to Mode um, for for sending this out. One, it's just very nice of them to do so, but two, I don't think I would have bought one of the 2022s because I have a 2020 first edition already that I like a lot. Um, so very nice of them to, to not only send me the board, but it enable me to have that experience to compare these for people. Um, because I do have friends who ask me about keyboards and they asked me about the new, 20, uh, the new 2022 version of the 80 and I really didn't know uh, what or how it might be different. I could, I could speak to stack mount, black inks, FR4 plate, you know, aluminum carbon fiber plates as well, but I, I didn't know what the top mount would be like. I could do top mount the 65, but it's much stiffer because it's a smaller keyboard. Um, so really appreciative to mode. Really appreciate all of you for watching this video. If you've got any further questions or comments, um, please leave it below so I can try and address it. I'm sure I didn't answer all the questions people will have about this keyboard. Um, in this video, I, I definitely answered all my own questions about it, which I guess is something. So yeah, there you go. Uh, one more time, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.